So today we're going to look at two ways of passing the butterfly guard when you're on your knees. Most of the time we prefer not to pass from the knees. We prefer to pass standing up. But when your partner has a good butterfly guard and the hooks are in, you don't feel comfortable standing up. It's a good idea to have a couple of passes you can use when you're down on your knees. So here's one good method or two good methods. So our partner is going to be seated facing us and they've got these hooks inside, right? Their feet are active. They're going to make it difficult for us to move around and start to change the angles. We might be concerned that if we stand up, we're going to enter into Ashigurami and we don't want that. So once we're here, we're down uh, on our knees. First thing always is deal with our partner's hands and head position. So for the hands, we're just going to take a grip on our partner's hands to prevent them from easily getting grips on our upper body or lower body. So we tie up at the hands here. We're going to bring our head into position by putting our head next to our partner's head like this. Okay, now we're going to have to get to a position where we can get up off of our knees because we're going to eventually want to move forward. So if you see right now, we're seated so that the shoelaces are on the floor. So once we're here in head position, we'll adjust a little bit to put the toes on the mat. This is going to make us put us in a, a much more active position. We can move around a little bit. So head position, hand position. Then we're going to switch our hand to the inside grip on our partner's hip. So if he opens up here a little bit, we're going to take this hand and we're just going to post it here on our partner's hip. Now you don't want to be too cavalier about this. If you just put your hand here and your partner draws your arm forward, they can pull you into a number of different attacks. So we're, we're cautious about this and we're, we're focused on, just relax this knee for a second, we're conscious of keeping our elbow here on the inside position instead of with an elbow extended where it's easier for our partner to strip the arm off. This inside position, it's also going to make it easier for us to control and monitor what our partner's leg is doing, which we're going to need in a moment. Okay, so part one, we're here, hands, head position, we give a little push, we put our toes on the mat. We reach our hand to our partner's hip and we take our elbow and place it on the inside position like this. Our second hand is going to go here to our partner's knee. We're going to take our outside knee and we're going to bring it to the inside. So initially your partner has two butterfly hooks with the toes on the floor. That allows you to pivot and bring your knee to the inside. So it's not much, but it's the beginning of our access to the inside position and to the drive across. So we take our knee and we bring it to the inside. So the sequence once again is hands, head, we come up onto our toes, we find the inside post and the hand here. We take our knee and we drop it just to the inside position. Then in one motion, we flare our knee out and we take a little jump. So you're gonna hop up, taking your knee off the floor and step in here so that you have your shin inside the line of your partner's two knees. And this is very important because when your leg is on the inside position like so, it makes it much more difficult for your partner to easily access your arm and your upper body for attacks, okay? If there's nothing in this space, then it's much easier for your partner to throw a triangle on, boom, okay? Enter into omoplata, attack Gigi Gatami. So, one, two, we're here, hip and, uh, and far knee. We drop the knee to the inside, then in one motion, we extend and pop, dropping into this, the split squat here. Once we're here, let's go back a little bit, please, and move your body up this way. So once we're here and our knee is inside, we have a little bit of an issue. The issue is that our hand on our partner's hip is not enough to prevent them from continuing to scoot away, to take our back, or to replace the guard. So you can't stay here very long. As soon as this happens, we take the hand that was on the hip and we dive it through as an underhook. Now usually when you're driving here, you're able to put your partner down on the elbow. That's a good thing for us. The top arm is the one that we're focused on for right now. We're gonna take our arm, we're gonna shoot it through, we're gonna bring our head here under our partner's head. Now we can drop our knee to the inside position like so. And we have the choice between passing right from here by cutting the knee out or switching our arms, locking the head and arm like so, and using our outside leg to free our leg. Okay, those are both good options. Rotate, please, here. Okay, so hands, head, toes, knee goes to the inside position. We find our grip, we pop up, and we are in this split squat position. You can see now, this is the target for the underhook. 
We're going to shoot our arm through and bring our head to the other side so that we can take the underhook and begin the process of putting our partner's upper back on the floor. We drive the knee to the mat. Now from here, we can control our partner's elbow on the far side. Lifting, rotate with me, please. All right, we can take our partner's elbow off the mat and then cut the knee back to pass. Or if we feel that there's a lot of resistance here, we can't control the elbow, we'll swim to the inside, gather our partner's head up. Now from here, we can use our second foot to free our leg and pass here to the cross side position. So this is the first method that we would use to deal with our partner's legs. The second method, involves the same exact setup, but a change of position because our partner doesn't give us the inside position. We have to go now from the outside. So that looks like this. Hands, head, hip and knee up. We drop the knee to the inside. When we go to do our split squat, where we pop up and step the leg to the inside, we find that our partner retracts this leg here and goes down and we, we're no longer able to get the inside position. So as you can see, in a case like this, we're now shin to shin. And when we're shin to shin, we can't drive our knee to the spot that we need it to be, which is down here on the floor by his hip. So we switch from a push-in grip on our partner's knee here to a push-in grip on the outside. We just roll our hand from inside to outside. Now from here, we straighten our body up and we pass our knee to the outside. Instead of continuing to pass, you don't want to make this mistake of trying to continue to pass here because your partner has such an open position on the outside that they'll often scoop the hip, go it out, and then start to pommel the top leg in, and you end up with all sorts of problems. So instead of that here, once we get to the outside, we're gonna run our partner's legs down the other way and land in the flank. You have nice back exposure here, you can push your partner's arm by, cut the corner, and land behind them. So our second method for passing butterfly guards, go back a little bit. It's one where we don't go to the inside position as we did with the split squat, but we take the outside position and end up in a flank. So, hands, head, we come up, so notice again, we bring our hips up and we put our toes on the floor, bring the knee to the inside, find the hip, find the knee, we hop up and we find our partner reclining and bringing that leg here. So, if we continue to drive, we're saying slightly please, we continue to drive through here, big problems, okay? You're just gonna get stuck, your partner's leg is in the way, They've got a barrier, they can push you back. So when we feel this resistance and they're bringing their knee back in this direction, we're gonna straighten clear, and now we're on the outside. From this position, instead of trying to drop, where there's often resistance, he's posting on the shoulders, etc., we're gonna take that knee back under and we're gonna cut through. Now from here, you have your partner's options are limited. They can either accept the position with their two shoulders on the floor, in which case you're here to pass, or they can turn their back up off of the mat, in which case you're in a good position to cut the corner and start to look for back attacks. When you're first beginning doing, especially doing no gi, but this technique works really well for gi as well, um, sometimes trying to figure out what's your opening position with the butterfly guard can be, can be hard because you're on your knees, you don't have a lot of mobility, your partner's legs are kind of in the way, and everywhere you go they seem to have sticky feet. So that's why we like to start with the method where we, we look to take inside position, we eliminate the problem of two hooks by putting one knee in the middle, and then from there we have our initial option which is the passing to the inside with the knee cut monitoring the, the far arm. And as an alternative, you have a pass to the outside where we flank the legs and then move around the corner. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, please let us know. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.